What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Mitch. What's up, guys? First on the agenda? Shot. Shots. Oh, <sighs> shit. Beat trading. <laughs> what was that? Tequila or vodka? Tequila? Tequila. Yeah. Oh. It's Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade. Yeah. Shit. So what's up, Rob? How you doing out there in old Texas? It's a different day. Um, just grinding away. Keep having hours and hour long conversations with Danny about how we can fix stuff and trying to get uh, some stuff moved around for this uh, stuff in the pipeline, you could say. Mm-hmm. So nice. just been cranking away and working on that and ideas and setting some stuff up for the fall. That's what's up. What about you, Danny? How you doing? Cranking away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Working <man>. on stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. All of that. Answering All of that Rob's stuff. phone calls. <laughs> Talking to that's phone crazy. Rob on the phone for, yeah, all that stuff. That's what, that's what I've been doing. That's crazy. For, for the most part. <laughs> Where are you? Excuse me. Where are you? <laughs> I'm doing just good, as you can tell. <laughs> Whoa. Just. <laughs> Non alcoholic beer. That's what's up. No, I'm doing all right. Family's doing good. Can't complain. How are you? Doing all right. A little bit better. Getting my head more in the game as the time passes. But uh, started uh, working on another song. I'd been working on it for a while, but I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go with it. And just yesterday, it kind of all hit me. So I was kind of writing the verse last, rewriting the verse last night and stuff. And then uh, before we started this, before Josh got here, I laid down a vocal idea on the, the track. So Rob, you'll get to hear it after we're done with this. <laughs> it is. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've been seeing you posting a lot of videos and getting a lot of responses from people and interacting. I just want to say you are doing an amazing job. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, commend this. Man. I know I slacked off a bit on the social medias for a while, but, you know, it's, well, we don't understand as to why. understandable, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, no, man, it's just fun to get back in that routine of posting every day and just interacting with our audience and with our fans. I will say that our TikTok audience is way more interactive than our Instagram audience. Instagram, you guys got to get your shit together, dude. Because TikTok <laughs> is blowing you guys away. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, no, we got uh, quite a few videos, actually, that I want to do some response videos with uh, with you guys today after this. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Rob, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's on the agenda for today, man? Well, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the songs that are an overture or uh, incidental music, the, the song that sets you in the mood for what's about to come. Like they, they play them before operas, before plays, and before concerts. Uh, we talked about um, amongst ourselves, but like how bands will play a song right before they come on to kind of be like, oh shit. Like Slipknot comes out with uh, Van Halen's Running with the Devil. So what's a song that you would present that says, here's the mood that you're about to enter. What what song is like that one? All right. You can start. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you know me, this is a song I've fucking wanted to come out to for years. Um, it's Leslie Gore's Sunshine and Lollipops. Okay. What? Yeah. But okay. what I, I've, I've made a mix of this before where it's like it's playing, it gets to the end of the song, and then it starts stuttering, sputtering, and like all staticky, and then it breaks into the first song. That's cool. Uh, That's what I would do personally. Just have something upbeat and happy and watch it kind of like the uh, Bray Wyatt type promo, you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of like this, oh, what's... It's not all happy and you hear kind of sputtering, but doing something along those lines, like old classic song, you know? Cool. So would that be considered an intro? No, it's considered an overture. So it's just the song, like the lights dim, this song hits, you know, and then after that song's halfway started or whatever, 
then the band comes out on stage and then they just fire up and start playing. For sure, for sure. All right, that's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, uh, Danny? Me, oh, I, mean, I mean, sorry, but no, no, go ahead. I say I, I would probably. I think there's some bands that uh, that pick a song and they just kind of stick with it, you know. And me, I would probably change it each tour, you know. But I would do things oh, like, point. you know, Puff the Magic Dragon, and you know, I mean, just kind of, sometimes it'd be something silly. Sometimes it would be probably something heavy, and you know, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. I would, ch- I would say, I would, ch- I would want to change it up often. Yeah. Josh, what you got? Okay, okay. So kind of sticking with Danny's theme of changing it up. Be serious? <laughs> like, Pro- really? <laughs> Pull that Beat card. A, a serious song, I guess, to come out to uh, probably Antichrist Superstar from Marilyn Manson or something along those lines. Or if I could pick just a chorus from... Uh, a long road out of hell. Joking around, fun song to come out to. Darkwing Duck theme song. I'm sticking with that. See, See, stuff like that. We're on, See, this we're on the like, same level, same same uh, same era, Josh. But I was thinking the Gummy Bear theme song the, from from the, the the show The Gummy Bears. First right of all, DuckTales. Sing, sing it for us. Sing it's it for us. How did it go? Hey, I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with that. No. Uh, Ducktales has a great bass line. It's a solid. It's a solid song. Are, are we reviewing Ducktales right now? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, out of those shows, I it's a solid Duck song, Tales. dude. But that chorus in Gummy Bears, it was for a children's TV show, dude. They did not have to go that hard, dude. That shit was dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I'd probably do something along the lines of. Uh, it's a song off of the Steal This album from System of a Down. It's the I E A I I O one. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Yeah. I, I would probably come. You're a fan of Mal? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would probably pick that song or something something, something from System of a Down, more than likely. Uh, if not that one, probably the song Forest. I love that song. That song rips. <clears throat> Two bangers. Right on. Those are fun to play. Uh, hell yeah, man. So, Rob, what else we got? <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, with that being said, that would be like a song that the band would come out to. Uh, what would be a song that pumps you up? Something that you either uh, warm up to, You like if you throw it on, hey, I could just jam this one out and feel like okay I'm, I'm i'm in the mood i'm set you know what i'm saying what's what's one song that like all right if i can rip through this we're golden and not being one of ours you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i get you there that's yeah. that's fair <laughs> who's going first so, danny you want to take this one i would go slipknot we are not your kind oh that would be that I would like be that. my kind of pump out before I kind of just just to get in that mindset you know like you know who what company we're with you know when we do a show you know it's it's us so we're not we're not the same as you you know that's that's how I feel about it you know mm. yeah. what about you Josh I got two I'm gonna be greedy um, <laughs> first, first pick, pick would have to be the very first song I saw from Gojira, which would be off of The End of All Flesh, I believe it is, or The Way of All Flesh. And it's uh, called Ouroboros. It's the first track off that album, just like the drum and the ride intro. It's a hard pattern to play, and then there's double bass in the middle all the way to the end. Or Norma Jean, One Million Watts. Mm. Nice. Best. Nice. Rob, what you got? Uh, me, I. Oh, He's all gummy. I got, I got two. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pull a Josh. I'll, I'll do two, and then Danny, you could go back and pick two if you want. But uh, one, it's got to be snot absent. Just that song rips no matter any time it's on, which version, whether it be the straight up version or the one from the Strange Land soundtrack. They both fucking rock. 
Um, second track that would instantly get me pumped up is El Phantasmo and the Chicken Run Blastorama by White Zombie. Yeah. Just mm. anytime that song just comes on, you're like, ooh. Damn, damn. Ooh. That song <laughs> rips every time. Yeah. You? So, for me, uh, whenever I'm driving to whatever venue we're going to, I miss, for some, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I listen to a lot of like R&B and pop before I get there, for the most part. Uh, I sing a lot of like uh, Marvin Gaye, I sing a lot of Al Green, I sing a lot of like uh, sync or whatever it is, you know, like I, whatever, I, whatever I, I throw in there. What did you say? <laughs> Yo, you heard me. You heard me. You cut now. Yeah. It's getting really <laughs> no, so static like, on my end. I can't really I tend to I tend to I tend to sing a lot of uh, poppier stuff to try to help me out with like loosening up for like the highs and stuff that I sing in our music, you know. If um, you want to sing higher, we can go get higher in the parking lot if you want. <laughs> oh, dude, I think I'm good right now. To be honest, holy oh, crap! Here we go. And I don't I don't even do. I don't even smoke nearly as much as you guys do, and I don't know how the hell I end up like the most fucked up one most of the time. So <laughs> lightweight. Right, yeah. Good smoke with us most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, but before we play, I usually like sneak away to my car, and I'll always like blast the uh, psychosocial. Slipknot gets 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 the blood going, gets the blood, and then I, and then that helps me sing more with the intensity that I use as well. So, yeah. It's normally a mixture of Slipknot and R&B. <laughs> Speaking of R&B, how's it, how are you feeling about your buddy getting arrested? How, how are you doing with that? Hey, man. Players, players fuck up too, man. You know what I mean? They, they... <laughs> I just hey, like was it, what, what was it? Did you hear the conversation between, between him and the police officer too? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, so... Rob, did you hear about this as well? Mm-mm, I just heard one martini. So uh, <laughs> he says something along the lines to the police officer. They're, they're talking back and forth, and he says, man, this is going to mess up the tour. And the police officer says, what tour? And he goes, the world tour, idiot. That's the, <laughs> literally the conversation between him and the police officer. He's oh. like, you're going to mess up my tour, man. So, Okay. I, I got to bring this up, and this has nothing to do with music or anything. Mark, you're going to love this. WWE okay. is trolling real life now because what they're doing is the second something starts and hits because they did that, and then was it Grayson Waller did the same thing backstage, and they threw it up as content as well. So he's using the same lines that Justin's saying, uh, the whole <laughs> hot Tui girl. <laughs> they had Liv Morgan doing it, so it's like it's WWE is pulling hard from social media and throwing it at their social media, and it, some hey, of speaking, it's corny, but some of it's really good. Speaking of the uh, the Hawk Two girl, I saw a video where where a lady was like, "Where are you? Because you're literally like TikTok famous, and everybody's looking for you, and they can't find you." You know, it's kind of funny. I, I saw a TikTok video. I don't know how true it is, though, because, you know, people tend to make shit up. But, like, there was a dude saying that she had been fired from her job because apparently she's a teacher. So I don't know if there's any truth to that. If there, I mean, if if so, I think that's kind of lame. Like, you know? Yeah. Sounds like she's trying to teach something. I don't know. Right? <laughs> if she's the health class teacher, that well, go back to high school, damn it. Be nice. <laughs> the, the, the kids coming home, Mom, the teacher said you got a hot tool on that thing. <laughs> no, I'm starting to wonder because my son's going into That's junior cool, high. Man. This could be interesting. <clears throat> oh, man. But, yeah, dude, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to, to dive into like that, Rob? Um, What was the third thing? What was the third thing? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, to be honest. I really gotta start writing this shit down. Where's the producer, Jess? Producer well, Jess. We oh, hold on. You one know what thing the is, more that we were gonna talk about. She one problem know. is that it's it, it's on our phones. It's in so. all of our phones. <laughs> 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 the text message. My phone's right there. <laughs> Look at it. It's right there. We are so dumb. 
<laughs> Not one of us is like, hey, I'm going to, yeah, no, just thinking ahead because I'm not going to be able to use my phone. Not one of us. Um, if I remember, I think that may be it other than we're going to review YOU again. No, 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 no. That's the next video. There was a thing. That's our content that we're doing for the Patreon. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about that. We have a Patreon account coming soon, right? We do have a. Hold on. <clears throat> what does it say? Hormone song. Ideal venues. We did that already, right? The writer yeah. item. Yeah. Hormone songs. Yeah. yeah, okay. We literally did everything on that list, dude. What? Are you looking at the right list? Uh, I'm looking at the list that she showed me. Oh, no, that's not. Where is it? When's that from? Last week. Sorry, the bottom one. Oh, okay. Last oh, week. You got the wrong one. Good. It's all good. 2022. We if we have to. Oh, we can cut uh, all this. It's no big deal. We're going to cut <laughs> this. Shit. Shit. <laughs> Are you not paying attention to Danny having fun with the camera right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just... Oh, we're okay. Certain we're songs, certain songs are artists that inspire your writing style. Oh, yes. That one. Okay. <laughs> so, Rob. Danny, are you okay? Yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Rob, what else, Rob, what else would you like to talk about? <laughs> huh? I said, what else would you like to talk about? Uh, we could talk about um, artists or certain songs that have inspired our writing or uh, <clears throat> how our approach is. Um, yeah. I know a lot of us have taken on this project as something new where I've, I've never really dealt with multiple singers in a band. Um, I've done similar writing with like samples and stuff before, but nothing like this to this extent where it's written out and chopped and skewed and distorted and to this extent. So with that, you have to bring a different approach of the writing process and the influence that you bring. So me being a big snot fan, I can't really pull snot into a whole lot of songs, you know, that don't sound like snot. So you have to find inspiration from Trent Reznor songs. and Hans Zimmer. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> he just logs out. Fuck you guys. He's like, peace out, bitch. Uh, but like your your guitar style playing, like what? Who influences like that tone that you want? Like, who's got a similar, like, yeah, the way they get capture him or the way they did his vocals on this album or, you know, even this is a great example or how they do this, you know? Yeah. You know. You want to start, Josh? Uh, no, I Josh, can. Don't be selfish. I, I can. I have kind of an idea. Um, okay. Music production guitar tone wise, not I don't really know if it counts, but writing and structure wise, I like the way Marilyn Manson approaches music and how he scored the first Resident Evil soundtrack, his ideas behind it and the mind fucking with the tick clock ticking clocks and stuff, like the ideas that you can go that far into something just with sound that a normal person wouldn't think of. That was kind of inspiring to me to hear and learn about that, so to speak. But drum-wise, or anybody who I would want to work with when it comes to tones and the way they can make drums sound, hands down, Will Putney over in New York. I would love to work with that dude just because of his roster of all these different drummers he's worked with. And it's not that you get the exact same drum sound out of it, because everybody's drum kit is different. It's just the way he approaches and your final product. It just sounds amazing that I would, if I could, I'd be willing to pay whatever the hell he wanted just to go spend a week with him and track one song from beginning to end, but take my time and have his honest opinion on certain things because he is a producer as well and mm -hmm. is a member of Fit for an Autopsy, but doesn't do the live touring thing. So I respect the fact that he chose to stay in town and work with other bands and make his money off that. But he still has the writing aspect going all the time. 
and he always has credits for writing drum patterns on almost every album he works with. So if you give me a choice, I'm going to pick that dude. Hell yeah. What about you, Mark? Uh, so for me, uh, like you were talking about how when we joined this, when we joined this project, uh, like welcome back. <laughs> you, were, you, like, you were talking about like how when you joined this, when you like when you joined the project, and how you were like you never really worked with two vocalists and stuff like that. You know, I'm obviously I'm the same way, hmm. and I started listening to a lot more uh, bands that have dual vocalists. Is what I started doing just to like just to see their process of uh, how they approach it, I guess, you know, the, mm. I, I, I had already listened to like a lot of like Alisana. So I had that as like an influence when we first started. Um, but, and then, you know, you go down the line of these other bands and for the life of me right now, I can't think of any of the names of them because I'm a little, but anyways, uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just, you know, I listen to a lot more song, bands that have dual vocals, but also for myself, I've just always listened to a lot of like, uh, I've listened to a lot of Brandon Boyd, a lot of, uh, you know, from Incubus and, and Slipknot, Corey Taylor. I listened to a, a lot of my inf vocal influences are like those guys and like Chris Cornell. I listen to a lot of uh, Audio Slave when it comes to like how I write like choruses and and stuff like that. My cadence tends to be a lot more the lines of... Did you say, that. like, the way I ride horses? <laughs> the way I ride, <laughs> write choruses. Write choruses. Horses. Horses. Yeah, yeah. I said ride horses. And I was like, what is Chris Cornell? That's the most, that's that's the most important part, dude. Yeah. Like, How do I ride a horse, you know? Yeah, just you gotta yeah. make sure you finish. Yeah, and it's cool. And then it's what I... Uh, something that we haven't done in a while that Danny had asked a couple of times was, like... Hey, uh, give me two songs that I can like pull reference from both to try to create one, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I think, uh, we should probably do that again soon. Cause I loved when we did that. I think that's how we ended up with, uh, trying to think what two songs it would have been. Fractions. It's one of them. Yes, it was Fractions. Yeah, it was Fractions. I know that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause one of the songs was hand, the hand that feeds. I remember it was one of those. Yeah. It was a perfect was, circle song too. Yeah, and then in a, in a perfect circle song that I that I sent you. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's just cool to see. Uh, I don't know. I like when Danny does that when he t challenges me to think out of the box. And he's like, "Hey, man, pick two songs you think that we could kind of like. If these two songs had a baby, what would we do with it? You know, <clears throat> abort it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> Hey, Mark. Yo. Do you remember opening up for Alisana and your son got to jump on stage and sing with them? I do, yeah. I love that video. It's cool because uh, that that night was pretty awesome. Uh, they were really, really nice to Andrew. We even went up and talked to them after, and they gave him, like, a shirt and the set list. He actually still has it framed in his room. They, gave, nice. they, they autographed the set list for him. They gave him a shirt. Uh, after Andrew took a picture with the singer, the singer was like, can I take a picture with you now? You know, he's like, I want to remember this moment too. And Andrew was all excited, like, oh, he wants to take a picture with me. You know, it was cool. They were really nice to him. Yeah. That was a fun show. <clears throat> yeah. Danny? And you guys can actually see it on YouTube. Just type in Andrew and Alisana. It comes right up. Uh, sorry, Rob, the question again? <laughs> <laughs> the question, uh, I mean, we can just uh, rewind it. Um, Wait, you answered, what, bro. You what, answered. Like, artist, I know, that's what I thought. I was like, I said, yeah. No, but like your guitar tone, like, I, where where do you get inspiration for some of your writing styles? So, uh, guitar tone, I mean, for me, I, I usually do a guitar that's kind of warmer um, on one side, and then I do a higher gain kind of tone on the other side. And I would definitely say that the higher gain one is, is kind of more inspired by like um, Dimebag. Um, and then, I don't know, I guess the more uh, warmer kind of guitar tone is, is a little more kind of like corn, you know, type tone. Um, and then when I drop down and I use an eight string, um, I, use, I use a heavier um, noise gate on it and stuff. Um, but a band that like, I guess kind of like Josh was saying is the producer band that I would like to work with is uh, some of the guys in uh, periphery. 
Um, I just I look those guys that they've done so many different like like little things where it's like each they do a whole album where it's each guy picks a song and they kind of like head up that song and it's like an EP and it's got, you know, instrumental versions. They're always doing shit like that. And it's mm-hmm. just, it just looks like uh looks like a fun, uh, kind of fun game. Those guys play, you know, kind of musically. I feel like they're always kind of challenging each other. You know what I'm saying? And that's, uh, that's looks fun, you know, to just do that, you know? So, yeah. So you want to get together with the M&M package. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> it's Misha and Matt. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, Misha, there's a, there's a lot. He had a bunch of, uh, you know, YouTube videos out that he's done. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I've kind of learned as far as like the computer end of things. Like, you know, I mean, like I've always kind of known about MIDI and this and that, but watching some of his stuff and just kind of putting together drums and MIDI and stuff. I mean, that's, he's a, he's a guy I kind of turned to and watched, watched a bunch of his videos and kind of really pulled from some of his process. And, and it's cool when somebody out there on, on that level produces videos out like that and shows people kind of some of the stuff they're doing. Any last thoughts, gentlemen? I think we're about to coming to the end of this episode here. Uh, oh, yeah. Beginning of August. But, oh yeah we have a new single coming beginning of august is that what we're doing is that what we're talking about i think so i think we're gonna give it some time right yeah so beginning of august though right is that correct okay yeah yeah i think we'll, we'll... We i thought i was wrong yeah. <laughs> so beginning of august we'll let you guys know exactly what day uh fairly soon probably within the next couple of weeks um <clears throat> but yeah great way to support the band uh, share this, like this, leave a comment. It all helps the algorithm to push it out to other people. Check out the link in our bio. You guys, thank you so much. This is the last days of Warcast.